morning, good morning, good morning. Good to see you. Before I came in to stay in, I sat out at the picnic table for a little while, and it was so beautiful and relaxing and just meditative. So I encourage everybody, come during the week, come anytime, and just enjoy the property. It's wonderful. Welcome to you once on Zoom. Good morning, good morning. And do we have any newcomers? No? So this is the year from living from one's core values. I ended up finding out we had so many core values than we thought. And this month is the last week for awareness, adaptability, and appreciation. So you guys are going to open the meditation service? Mm -hmm. So our musicians will open the meditation service, and it's John and Lori. And then when they're through with the music, just go straight into a meditative stance. Just allow yourself to flow and feel the beauty of it.
slowly allow yourself to come back into the moment. Knowing that all is well. Feel the beauty that came through us with that music. Feel the beauty that meditation brings us, the knowledge that we are one with source. And I am so grateful that all we are and have and say with me, please, and so it is. Yes. That was haunting. It was wonderful. Thank you, Joe, John, whoever you are. Okay, that's a joke, right? <laughs> uh, you guys want to do music before spiritual thumb or after? Oh, you want to just do it while we're here? Let's just do it now. Okay. Okay. That works. Yeah, I, I like this flow. This is nice. Because it takes a lot of effort putting this guitar on it. On it. <laughs> <laughs> Give yourself standards. This song is, um, I've really been on a writing streak. And this uh, one that I'm going to do next, I actually didn't write it. It's uh, from a woman in my writer's group wrote this. And when she read it, I go, oh my God. I go, let me take that home and I'll, I've got to make a song out of it. So it's called Soul. Mm -hmm. And you might think it's going to start out really depressing. You know, it's, it's, oh God, that's typical Lori depressing stuff. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and of course, the uh, harmonica adds to it also. This is the one that's in E. E. <laughs>
that all day. <laughs> but we've got a special man now to come up to give us a spiritual thought. John Milan, please. Well, good morning, everyone. That was wonderful. Thank Many you. thanks to Lori B and yeah. John and yeah. the author. Uh, that was that was really a perfect song. And and the harmonica just brings soul to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it just stirs that depth. Mm -hmm. but, but we have this is the last week of May. We have had many themes, many nice talks. Um, I want to talk like others on adaptability because that has is something that uh, you may guess has been on my on my mind um, with my ankle stuff. So I wanted to talk about physical adaptation and then and then go on go on from there. So about five years ago, I sprained my ankle really horribly and um, and got uh, I actually did nothing, just tried to kind of hobble my way through and get better with that. Um, then I developed plantar fasciitis and went to physical therapist, had taping, had icing, had all kinds of different kinds of physical therapy sorts of things. Then I was diagnosed with arthritis. So in, in that foot and in a knee, but um, so that too required a number of physical adaptations, new, new physical therapy sorts of things. Um, icing, uh, new, new, new procedures, new physical procedures to, to deal with that. So about a year and a half ago, it got even worse. Um, and I had a second MRI where it was seen that I had a torn ligament and uh, the severe arthritis. So surgery was recommended. So I did that surgery and came home from that and uh, was in a, I think many of you know this because I was still coming pretty much unless we were you know, on, on Zoom, but I, I was uh, in a cast, could not bear weight on it, was getting around on a knee scooter, which was actually kind of fun, um, you know, because on this kind of surface, it was, it really moved. Um, so, uh, so a knee scooter, and then that turned, that evolved into being in a uh, walking boot with crutches and no weight bearing still for about six more, six more weeks. So, there were, there were two and a half months of no weight bearing on my left leg. And that took a lot of adaptation in absolutely everything from, from showering to, you know, food preparation, dressing, all, all those sorts of things. Dog walking, which has fallen 100% to, to Joyce. Um, and it required a lot of adaptation by Joyce as well to meet my sort of needs and abilities at the time. So those were all physical adaptations. They were changing constantly to whatever was hurting that day, whatever a physical therapist was recommending, whatever a doctor was recommending, whatever friends were recommending that all, all of which, you know, had to sort of make sense, but they were all physical adaptations responding to current changing uh, conditions. So the, the spiritual part of this is I prayed throughout all of this. And um, I really like the five steps that were that is taught here, five steps of prayer that is taught here. And I really focused on the, the third step, um, the realization uh, sort of affirmation step. And I just know in it, all of my prayers that the source that made me is the source that is healing me. And so that, that's a, a kind of powerful thing for me to know that keeps all of possibilities alive uh, in, in my mind. Um, I also recognize that the natural God-given state of being is vibrant health. So those are some, some powerful thoughts that, that I have in, in prayer regarding my physical my ankle and my physical health in, in general. Um, I also recalled the uh, Diksha training that um, some here participated in, and, and I just looked at, I still have a folder for it, um, that uh, that occurred in 2014, nine, nine years ago. And um, it seems like 
seems like 20 years ago to me. It seems a long time ago. But um, many of us here at PLC did it and, uh, and learned what that is, is accepting or manifesting divine golden healing energy in our hands, in our cupped hands, and then pouring it over the head of the, the recipient. And we did this here uh, you know, several, several years ago uh, for a little, little while after that. Um, but I, I pour golden healing energy into my foot. I massage it, I pour that energy in, I envision golden, golden light feeling, healing my, my, my ankle. Um, I, I've also envisioned or visualized um, myself walking painlessly in, in the mountains on uneven surface, which is presently difficult. Um, I, I envision that I, it's even transformed into some dreams for that. So all those feel like the right kind of spiritual thing to be doing. And they all are referring to the oneness, to the truth of my being. It is not changing. Actually, Ernest Holmes calls spirit the changeless in, in his, his big book, um, the changeless. So in physical adaptation, we are adapting to the changes that um, are happening every day, where in the spiritual area, our adaptation is kind of bringing ourself to spirit, bringing our, our selves to the divine truth, to, to the oneness. Um, so we're sort of heading in different directions. One is you know, towards the body, really, and the other is towards what is what is what is true. So I usually, when I'm starting to think about a, a spiritual thought, I usually look it up in the dictionary to see what the kind of common dictionary definition was. This time, I had pretty much written everything I've just said, and uh, then looked it up, and I was so pleased with what I saw, found that I, I thought I would share. Um, the, it gave two definitions. One was adjust to new conditions, and two was attune or align with. And I just thought, wow, those are, those are really perfect to what I've been thinking, what others here had, had spoken about in, mm -hmm. um, in their talks. And so my physical recovery is requiring adaptations and adjustments to the new and physical conditions Whereas spiritual adaptation is attuning and aligning myself uh, with the truth, with, with the changeless. So I, I failed to mention at the beginning of this that I actually had two little, two little spiritual thoughts instead of one large coherent one. So my second one, on a lighter note, I want to talk about music. And um, Joyce and I had a conversation of, as to whether anyone would get that joke or not, and no one did. So Joyce, <laughs> Joyce wins. Lighter note, music. Oh. You get it now? <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, okay, great. All right. All right. Um, but up, well. <laughs> but up, well. Yeah. Well, and, and it's we're heading into June, which is the month of Father's Day, and it seems like father jokes you know, are underrated uh, to me. <laughs> All right, I, I want to, Bob, Reverend Bob in his talk gave us a little model for adaptation that I really, I really liked when I heard it. It was just a nice kind of succinct um, <coughs> process I, I could sort of uh, relate to. So um, in summary and very, very, uh, you know, briefly, he, the, the technique was first apply science. First apply science. So I took that to consider, to, to, to mean consider our reason, consider our intellect, our rational logic, consider the issue that needs or requires some adaptation with our mind, um, our experience, our study. And Bob didn't say this, but I will say it for him. Of course, reliance on peer reviewed study. Um, <laughs> so, so the, the, the thrust of it is use our mind, think about things, try to figure it out, apply what we know, apply what we can figure, what we can learn, um, and then, uh, and then move into another thing. So it move into intuition. So a few weeks ago, I played a song by Suzanne Tang, 
um, from called Maya off her monsoon album. And she's an accomplished classically trained musician um, who played that song that I played on a Native American style flute that um, that she had been given by a top flute maker. So when I tried to play that song on my G minor flute, um, I could not reach the top two notes that she had hit. And I thought first, okay, I can't play this song. That's just the way it is. And then I thought, you know, I really like this song. Uh, maybe there's a way I can adapt it to my range. And so I, I studied the song and there were really just those two high notes that I couldn't reach showed up in two measures, six total beats. Um, and I thought, well, if I lower that, by the same steps, musical steps, um, it may sound okay. It may still work. And so I did that. I applied my science, I applied my mind, I applied my thinking, I applied the music theory that I know. And you mus musician folks, you know, this is, you know, 101 stuff, I'm sure. But for me, it was, you know, the 101 I needed. Um, so it was, uh, so I, I did that. I, I, I lowered it all, and then I played it and it sounded good to me it sounded good the melody still worked uh it didn't do anything different to the rest of the song and i liked it so it was the intuition that that came in so uh, that told me that made me know this works my science worked and so it is Thank you, John. I don't know if you realize that um, the definition that you gave, yeah. all the words started with A2. You really coordinated that. Whoa. <laughs> okay, so now we get to invite. Where is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought we lost our speaker. <laughs> He's right behind LJ. Can you see him? <laughs> oh, Reverend I'm, Joe Bull. I'm here. <laughs> oh, so funny. Did you think I got scared and left? <laughs> oh, great, great uh, <clears throat> stories, John, about your wellness and what you've been doing. To get better and better it's fabulous and i love that song that early song in, in um, meditation about spirit uh, what do i need to know uh, just really sent me it's wonderful well i want to talk to you about appreciation i've been thinking about this for a few weeks and uh, i've been in an appreciation mode lately for myself I found a, there's lots of definitions for appreciation. We all know this. I found one that I liked. It says appreciation is an admiration for something or someone, as simple as that. So to appreciate God's spirit is to simply pray and tell God how grateful we are <coughs> to have God in our daily lives. Each and every day I sit down and, and, and talk with God and start with appreciation of knowing God as we all know God in our own personal way. Because we already know that God lives within us in our hearts, in everyone's hearts. Uh, God lives within us, is us, and as us. So we are praising and appreciation for ourselves at the very same time. And as Reverend Angelo would say, isn't that cool? I am in gratitude and appreciation. It lifts us to just say those words to ourselves each and every day. And I invite you to do that each day, to appreciate the moment, to appreciate the day that we're in each day, because we only have one day at a time. That's all we need. God loves to hear from us. Did you know that? God loves to hear from us all the time, all the time. God loves to pray with us and God appreciates us and shares with us right back with us. Someone who says to you or me, I really appreciate you, it really lifts your spirits, it does for me. Someone says, I really appreciate you, Joe. Wow, it's wonderful to hear that. 
It builds our self-esteem, our confidence, and overall self-image, which reminds us that we are good people, good souls on this planet. We truly, truly are. I sure appreciate when someone says that. I appreciate you. It lifts the spirit within us and inspires and gives us a sense of self-worth. Self-worth. And uh, the Dalai Lama said uh, on power and gratitude and appreciation, he said, we need to learn to want, to want what we have, not to have what we want in order to get stable and steady happiness. Appreciation for me is about appreciating right now, right now in this moment, this very day, this very moment in time, and go no further than that. You know, when we had this COVID virus, that thing, as I'll call it, that came upon us, meaning all of us around the world, it affected all of us all at once, uh, being locked down, and, and adjusting our lives, adjusting our so-called way of life. And that was okay. It was something we had to go through the entire world. We'd never gone through it before in our lifetimes. And that was okay. We made adjustments. But what concerned me the most was how much fear it put in us. I talked to so many people who were just so fearful during that time. And it really bothered me to think that we were fearful of something like this because we were all in this together. And we know that fear strikes out. It just does. So during that time, I found myself meditating more, talking with, within myself with God, and it gave me gratitude and appreciation for what we do have, what I do have at that moment in that COVID period of time. I was more receptive to life, to not take anything for granted, for sure, and appreciating what I appreciate. It changed our way of being, but it didn't stop who and what we really are. It never did. Elsie Archer is a person uh, I was reading about recently who has written many articles and also now a book about helping people increase their small business in sales and also achieve, also help achieve goals in our personal lives. She's a very, very positive woman. I really enjoyed listening to what she had to say. Elsie explained about a woman who was in the, in the sales business with her small business and said she was trying to figure out how to get more clients. This was her concern. She was very concerned about this. This businesswoman told Elsie she wanted more clients to grow the business, and Elsie said to the businesswoman to shift her perspective. Uh, Elsie asked the businesswoman to stop worrying about trying to get more clients and focus her attention on being uh, appreciative of what she does appreciate. Because what we appreciate appreciates. It grows all within itself. And from, that, from there we grow, and this woman's business began to grow. She focused her attention on appreciating the clients that she did have, and eventually others came new clients came because she focused her attention on what she appreciates now. It's life shifting. And because she recognized that and blessed what she has, <coughs> all became so much better for her. When we put our attention into our intention, things happen for us. Reverend Michael Beckwith has said, he's the leader of the Galpe Church in Los Angeles. You want know some water, honey? Sorry. It's okay. I thought you were getting choked up because of what I was saying. <laughs> Reverend Michael Beck was said that change is the rule of the planet. It's the rule of the planet. We can't stop a change. We can't stop change, and we shouldn't. We change all the time, too. We're not even the same person we were 24 hours ago. Change is inevitable. It's not a bad thing. Life shifts all the time, and so do we. Either we're going with God with that or we're not. You know, if we want to resist it, we can do that too, but it makes life a little less comfortable. We give thanks and gratitude for what we receive, the things and people we have in our earthly lives for what we have. 
Focusing on the positive, we get closer and closer to God's spirit as we give thanks for what we do have right now, right now. Ernest Holmes, the founder of Science of Mind said, the prayer of thanks is the prayer of appropriation and appreciation. God's spirit. When we speak the words, thanks to, thanks to the God within us, we are already knowing before we ask, God is already giving us our answer. John talked about the five steps that we do in prayer, and he's right. We put out that, that prayer, and as we are, we're already knowing that the answer is there. See, God doesn't create for us. God opens our minds to what it is that we want. And so many times in my prayers, I've asked God for, for guidance to open my mind, open my eyes to something, and it has always come back to me, always. God has never failed. My friend I was telling you about a few weeks ago, he's been in the facility, uh, medical facility, because he's been very ill and just not doing well. And he is so miserable there. Every time I go to visit with him, he either wants to talk to me or he doesn't. Sometimes he just says, I don't want to talk about anything today. That's well, okay. That's fine. I blessed him and I moved on, on my, with my day. And other times he felt like talking and I said, I said, when are you going to go home? He says, they haven't told me. I said, when do you want to go home? He goes, right now. I said, then put your mind toward that. Put your attention to what it is you want. And he called me two days ago now. And he says, guess where I am? I said, you're home. He goes, how'd you know that? I said, I could feel it. I could feel it. I could tell you're home. You're home with your dog, your beloved dog and your wife and you're where you want to be. He told me that he decided it was up to him to get involved in his own wellness. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what he did. Mm -hmm. I said, if you want to get out of here, I'm, I'm about the only person in the world that can talk to him like this. He's old retired Sage Peacock. Those Sage Peacock guys are <laughs> worse than sheriffs, believe me. But I said, if you, if you really want to go home, you've got to get involved in your own wellness. And you've got to be able to prove to these doctors you're ready to go home. So put your attention on your intention. And he did. And he's home. The next thing he said was, when are you coming by to see me? I said, I'll come by and see you Tuesday this next week. I'll stop in and say hi to him. So I was very, very proud of him for getting involved in his own wellness at the same time. And he appreciates everything that's going on around him. And he said, I really appreciate you as a friend. And it lifted me at the same time to know that I said something right to him, because we never know, right? Ernest Holmes goes on to say, if we want to come to spirit for a healing, let us come in peace and joy. For spirit is joy and love. When we're angry and we're starting to talk to God, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. God doesn't understand that, that anger. God and spirit is like, come to me in peace. Open your mind and tell, tell me what it is that you want, and we will work together. So always start with peace. Get yourself settled. <clears throat> Come in with a thankful heart, which is in harmony with life, appreciation, gratitude, and thanks. The motive power, which attracts in likeness. An attitude of gratitude, as Holmes would say. Appreciation is seeing the good in life, recognizing gifts that come our way, and then showing that gratitude and being appreciative in the moment of what we have. The Buddha said, when some things go wrong, Take a moment to be thankful for the many things that are going right. Focus your mind on what's going right for you. Always be thankful for what you have, because many people have nothing, he said. And gratitude will shift you to a higher frequency, and you will attract much better things. Ralph Waldo Emerson, I know you've heard of Emerson. He was a writer, a thinker, and a philosopher in the 1800s. Emerson believed that each individual must make their own decisions 
about God, the human race, and the world in general, and how you see all these things. Do you want to live a happy, good life, or do you want to kind of feel miserable? It's all up to us. Emerson believed that individualism, personal responsibility, and nonconformity were essential to a thriving society. In this meaning of a nonconformist, Emerson refers to individuals who take their own path, their journey to discover who and what they are truly meant to be. And how many of us have grown up to be who we were supposed to be? I'm not sure I did, but we all have our own path to decide what we want to do in our lives that feels right. Instead of following along the same path or road, people became individualist, studied God, for example, and discovered and believed in a faith that worked for them. I believe that our faith in God is an individual choice. I really do. Emerson went on to say that successful is the person who has lived well, laughed often, and loved much who has gained the respect of children who leaves the world better than when they found it. Who has never, who has never lacked appreciation for the earth's beauty and who never fails to look for the best in others or give the best of themselves. Emerson appreciated people, especially people who believe in doing what you believe is right instead of blindly following society and what society says we should be doing. Going back to Reverend Beckwith, he says life is shifting all the time. And it is, with those changes come challenges. We're always being challenged. In appreciation, Beckwith says, have compassion toward yourself first. Have compassion toward yourself first. Recognize what's working right now right now. In tough times, you discover you have other talents. You have other talents that you can draw from. Bless what you do have and be at peace with yourself, first and foremost. I know a lot of you, maybe all of you, remember uh, Tina Turner. She just recently passed. She was a worldwide uh, entertainer and uh, her music uh, especially Proud Mary. If you listen to Proud Mary, you got to get up and dance. <laughs> Boy, that woman could move. She was on stage even at the age of 74 in front of tens of thousands of people on stage, open air concert, still making her moves and singing Proud Mary. And I was like, I'll watch it. I just get chills watching what that woman can do. She's amazing. But Tina Turner found her strength and her way in life after an abusive relationship for years. She began practicing Buddhism. She moved to Sweden in 2013 and discovered, as she says, Buddhism and started practicing Buddhism, trying to rediscover herself, trying to, to find her inner peace and her inner strength uh, with her connection with God. She wrote a book called Happiness Becomes You. And as Ms. Turner said, learning Buddhism principles gave me the tools to do exactly uh, to do exactly that, to increase my inner peace and my inner strength and true clarity in life. That's how I developed myself on the deepest levels and was finally able to see my life clearly, to find a way around every obstacle. And she did. She found a way to appreciate her life again. She was a beautiful soul. There is no thing, nothing we cannot have that we cannot achieve through appreciation of ourselves. We appreciate others and what others do for us, but we've got to appreciate ourselves too, because we live with us, right? Nobody else can get inside of us other than me and God. So we learn to appreciate ourselves first and foremost. And things don't happen for us. Things happen because of us. I'd like to end my talk with you with a, with a prayer. If you would please go into prayer with me. 
Thank you, God, for the blessings you have bestowed on our lives. You have provided us with more than we could ever have imagined. You have surrounded us with people who always look out for us. You have given us family and friends who bless us every day with kind words and actions. I thank you for this and so much more. And so it is. Thank you. I thought I was going to have to go up there and hope for you. I lived. Hey. Hey, Joe, I got to tell you. You know what I admired about Tina Turner? Wow. And this is from a woman. All the time she was performing, she wore high heels. Yes, she did. And she still had great legs. Yes, she did. I remember when I was young and we had first pair of high heels. Back then, all the toes were pointed. Mm -hmm. And my toes have never been the same <laughs> since then. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. OK, it's time for our offertory. Could I have two volunteers, please? OK, Lori and Mel <laughs> J. OK, let me, let me, let me, this is like the army, right? <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Divine, Divine love, love, flowing, flowing green, green, blesses and increases, and increases all, all that I give and, and all that I receive. Thank you. <laughs> now, those watching on Zoom, if you look in your chat box, Missy should have put up how to do it on Zoom. Or you can all go into your iFocus, and it has the connections there, too. So we've tried to make it really, really easy. <coughs> now I have the address if you want to mail something. Oh, thank you, thank you. You guys are cute elves. <laughs> oh, do we have any announcements? Yes. Hi. Last week, a lady from FEMA came by with information to pass out to people in the community. And I'm going to put this on the table in the front. If you had any kind of severe damage due to the floods and the rain, they have information, uh, phone numbers, and email sites to, uh, or websites to be able to contact someone and uh, see what they're offering to help people. So it's more of a recovery service. Mm -hmm. And we said we would announce that, and therefore we have. Thank you. Um, <laughs> our prayer partner this week is John Milan. I have an announcement. Oh, excuse me. How did I miss you? I don't know. <laughs> you missed me from my talk, too. <laughs> I heard most of it in the <laughs> This is a, just a personal uh, announcement, a joyful announcement to, oh yeah, she's already producing. She knows what I'm going to say. I got permission to do this. Well, I just had a birthday a couple of days ago and she turned 65 years old. Now the best part about that is she now has become a recipient of Medicare, which saves me a lot of money for insurance. <laughs> so welcome to the ranks, dear. And you look beautiful as ever. Thank Happy you. birthday. Thank you. You're definitely a glowing 65. Let's see, I'm speaking next week. And let's do the prayer of protection, please. Mm. The life of God, God surrounds me. me. The love, the love of, God of God enfolds me. me. The power of God protects me. The energy of God watches over me. The energy of God is me. Wherever I am, God is, and that all is well. It's amazing, this prayer. It, people make changes in it. In different places you go, say it differently. But the basis of it is there through all different kinds of institutions and, and spiritual groups. 
it just shows you how important this prayer is that so many people recognize that. Yes. Do you guys want to do music before me or after me doing the closing prayer? It's your option. Whatever you would like. Okay, let me do the prayer and then you can just sing us out. Will that work? All right. Cool, thank you. Oh, just close your eyes and feel God's source. Feel this divine energy flowing through you, going through you, down through your feet into the core of the planet. Oh, anchored, grounded, secure in the knowledge that all is well in our life. We are very fortunate to have what we have, to live where we do, to have our spiritual community. There's so much to be thankful for and so much gratitude to offer. And I offer it for all of us. And say with me, please. And so it is. Yes. And now they're going to rock us out. Come on, guys. Woohoo! Well, first of all, I want to clarify something that um, I have this thing on my left, and it was only, it was a weed eating incident. So make sure you wear like, like, Maybe it might be a good thing for all those masks that we have left over mm -hmm. or a shield or something because boy something flew right in my lip there or right above it and uh, and it started swelling up that evening like I don't know if it was a poisonous thing or what. You know, so I just wanted to let everyone know that okay protect yourself yeah all right. yes all right but it's looking good it's 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 cleared up a bit. <laughs> this next song. Um, is uh, one of my current ones I wrote back in May, and it's uh, I call it my ego, because the ego, I think, is basically a physical uh, protection for us, you know. Uh, but it tries to scare us, and it does all these horrible things and puts us into fear and all that. So, the ego is a, something to be dealt with in a way. But anyway, this is my song called My Ego. What key is your ego in? Well, I this is my, 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 my ego is in. Starts out in G, G minor seven, and G.
Excuse me. Rocking us on out. So everybody rock on out for a great Memorial Day weekend and week and have fun and be safe. Thank you all. Thank you.